Hello and welcome to another episode of my F1 22 manager career mode here today for part 7 for the Monaco Grand Prix. As you can see we are at the start of qualifying in Q1 and we have sent out Lewis and George very early as there is a high chance of rain expected in the middle of Q1 so we're sending them out fast try and get a lap in if it does come down then they should be safe but Lewis has encountered an Alpha Tauri at the end of his lap which is not not very good because he somehow always seems to find someone to get stuck behind in qualifying so far this season back to Bahrain I think Saudi as well but both of them got times on the board and then let's see if the rain does come and as you can see the rain has come with just 11 minutes to go and look at how many drivers have not set a lap time it's about half of the field and they're trying to do soft runs on a very very wet track and as we come towards the end of the session people started switching to inters but the rain is, is starting to clear now and towards the end of the session we did get told that the rain is clearing so I decided to after I sent both George and Lewis out to box them both because no one was improving and we should be alright because the track though drying we obviously set our time on a much higher track than it currently is so it's caught out I say some big hitters it's still the normal normal guys down at the back album Bottas having a back qualifying as well into Q3 now then and the track is back to dry conditions it's like the rain never came down in Q1 and it's George now at the end of his lap here we are currently watching out to the final corner he comes now and up to the line where can he put the Mercedes it's Perez currently fastest and he only goes second fastest and it's now it's Hamilton's turn and he only goes third fastest because we only need to get into the top 10 but the shock exit in Q2 is Charles Leclerc can he ever get any luck at his home Grand Prix I don't think he can he's out in Q2 he's got a big job tomorrow on his hands if he wants to win or at least get a good result out of it, the championship leader but we're riding on board now with his teammate he comes up to the line and puts himself on provisional power ahead of Lando Norris can our lads get close? George goes second, what can Lewis do? Perez still only to settle up Verstappen is starting his lap Lewis goes P2 but it's not enough to to fret Carlos Sainz but here is Sergio Perez now coming up to the line is Perez going to do it? No, Perez can only make it P2 here's Max Verstappen he's gone purple in the first sector but he has encountered a very very slow moving Alpine of Fernando Alonso so it's the final run in Q Three then and we're seeing Ocon both Alpines making their laps and here comes Max Verstappen pole position provisional pole can Carlos Sainz match him but he's down in both sectors can Perez snatch pole away from him no he can't stays P3 Lewis stays P4 what can George do now Sainz stays P2 can George get himself on the front row up to the line now and he doesn't improve we're going to start the race P4 and P5 and with a rain expected in the rain as well for the Grand Prix we're going to start both of them on the mediums because it's not meant to come till around the halfway point of the race so unlike Spain when it was expected in the opening lap so we started him on the softs here is not meant to come until slightly later on so we'll start on the mediums and let's go to the Monaco Grand Prix 
and they'll have plenty of opportunities here to achieve a great result. The work Red Bull did during qualifying was nothing short of spectacular. Now let's see if they can repeat that for today's race. And the sun is shining bright here today. This is perfect weather for teams and drivers alike to show us what they're capable of. And you can't get much more excitement than this. On race day, it's the Monaco Grand Prix. We have beautiful blue skies overhead as the drivers line up on the grid. And here we've got Lewis Hamilton. Not as close to the front as they might have wished for, but we know the race order can change a lot during those first few corners. We've got the other Mercedes here. With a top 10 position on the grid, this race could really go either way for them. Will their hard work pay off today? It's time for one of the most exciting races in the world. This is the Monaco Grand Prix. It's lights out and away we go. So we're racing now in Monaco. Who's going to get the best start? It looks like Perez is having a go at Carlos Sainz. Sainz down in P2. Of course, can he get past Perez? Moves up into P2. Our team boys are still fighting. And can Lewis get past the Ferrari? But that may be it for the action today. Of course, you can't overtake a Monaco. And they can't get the job done there. But it's Verstappen from Perez. It's a great start for Red Bull. A Red Bull 1 at 2. It is as they all file through the lines hairpin. And unfortunately, not a lot really happened. So after lap 1, we're going to skip all the way on to lap 22 where George, we're telling him to look after the tyres. And he's coming into threat from the Alpha Tauri of Pierre Gasly and Fernando Alonso. We're trying to eat these tyres out. As you can see, everyone around us is on the softs. So Monaco, the degradation is normally not too bad. If we can possibly keep these alive, maybe when the softs go off, we can bring ourselves back into contention. You can see Lewis is all on his own now, but on lap 26, the rain has arrived just under the halfway point. And it's going to be time for the wet tyres. But no one's really struggling too much yet as Verstappen is in the final sector in the lead by a 10 seconds and he is gonna stay out red were not ready yet but ferrari with carlos sight have pulled the trigger and he is gonna go into the set of the four wet tires and after spain when everyone seemed to pit for the four wet tires we're gonna do the same we told lewis to pit but he's just gone past the pits so we're going to do the same for George. He is going to go into the full wets because that's something I've learnt from the last race in Spain when we of course pit them both for the inters and then everyone went to the wets so we had to fire away through Lewis. Still managed to get a podium that day and possibly can he do the same here. But as we go on the full wet tyres George comes out of the pits. You can see Gasly and Alonso are all going on the inters. So my logic may not have worked. Sight so as you can see, Probably. is on the full wet tyres. And those on the inters just a few laps later are coming in for another set of the full wet tyres. For a set of the full wet tyres. Leclerc's on it. Ricardo's in for McLaren to the full wet. We may have played a blinder here. This is Max Verstappen coming in. So Verstappen in the pit lane now. And he's going on to the four wet tyres as we skip on now. They've kept Perez out of Red Bull. And our strategy play has worked out big time as we have jumped then. Sergio Perez, even though Lewis was absolutely miles away from him during the race. The early stages, we have got him ahead, but Perez was slowly catching and the track after a lot of laps onto lap 61 has started to dry out and almost ready for the dry tyres so I thought we might as well risk it if we can the track looked dry 
So I decided to pit Lewis for a set of soft tyres and so see box, box, box. if he can gain some ground on those ahead if the track is dry. As soon as we boxed him for the softs, Bono tells him there's a dry line appearing so we may have gone a bit too early on the soft tyres. In hindsight, I, I don't know why I didn't just box George. It was less of a risk with George, obviously we're fighting for a podium. And even while editing this video, I was asking myself the same question. Just didn't think about that in the moment. But I'm lap 64, now it, it seems to be the time for the dry tyres. Unless Sergio Perez has just stayed out again. But Sergio Perez, a couple of laps later, has boxed for the soft tyres. And he's beaten us out. Lewis is at the fastest lap of the race. But he's come out beyond the back marker of Daniel Ricciardo. And the weekend we've bottled the podium. We may have the fastest lap. Get out of the way, Ricciardo. Honestly. And th this? as this is Leclerc. Leclerc fighting his way back through Leclerc. Gets past George. It's all going wrong now. It was all going, looking so good and going so right, but we seem to have bottled it. Here he comes, Carlos Sainz wins a Grand Prix. It's the Monaco Grand Prix for Carlos Sainz. Some would argue that he should have won it in real life. But anyway, Ferrari have for once done a good strategy. And they've been so strong so far this season. And it's a win for Sainz. Hamilton did okay here today. There's no doubt that Mercedes have a lot of potential. Now they need to figure out how to make it work for them. Absolutely. This was very promising. And now the team will be doing everything they can to make good on that promise. That's right. And they finished the race weekend in third place in the constructor standings. Next time, the teams will be racing through the streets of another city. Join us in Baku on the shores of the Caspian Sea for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. So it's a win then for Carlos Sainz. What a race for Sainz. Just bided his time. Obviously got jumped by Paris at the start and then just crawled his way back through. Really, really good job by Ferrari and him as well. I feel like we've bottled it again. A podium was in our hands. I don't know why I didn't pick George first and get Lewis out there. There was more to lose with Lewis. I don't know why I did that. A good thing is that Bottas' poor weekend means that we've jumped Lewis ahead of him in the driver's standings. We've still got to get George past him, but Bottas, the last couple of races haven't really been anywhere. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's slightly delayed. I know there wasn't a video earlier on this week. been having some issues with my Adobe, but I hope you've enjoyed the Monaco Grand Prix. And that's it. I'll see you in Baku. Goodbye.